Hey gang, welcome to Inverted Pursuits. Today we're actually going to jump back to an old project that I started in 2014, but only recently did I get around to finishing it. And that was uh, modifying my Nerf Hammer Shot Blaster. So the Nerf Hammer Shot, for those of you that don't know, is a blaster that originally contained only five darts in it and used a cam mechanism to actuate through that all mounted in the back. Um, there were also originally air restrictors in this that deadened the amount of force going through there that I removed originally trying to get more performance out of this uh, blaster. Quickly, the Nerf modding community jumped on board with the idea that they could up the number of shots than this because this is one dart lower than most other blasters that held a minimum of six. Um, I pretty quickly also started to realize that this could be pushed one dart further to seven. So in 2014, I made a post on a Facebook Nerf Modders blog about a seven shot uh, variant I had made for my blaster that utilized a lot of the original components where I had to modify the cam to make it work for seven shots instead of five and had just simply glued on pieces of PVC. Um, now I ran into some issues with this working because the PVC didn't want to seal well um, and a lot of other finicky issues. I had parts that ended up breaking on me in the end when uh, I was testing with them and things just, it was too similar to the original blaster to work. So I quickly ditched to this idea and went down the route for fully 3D printed barrels. So I completely 3D printed the barrels and was trying to keep a very minimalistic vibe since I was having this printed um, on my university's 3D printer, which cost us a little bit of print quota or money to use but I had underestimated the size needed for the back because I decided to use, again, the same mechanism that I was trying to copy off the original blaster. I got this to seat properly such that I could actually uh, fire a dart out of it, but the rotation mechanism never worked great and I had issues where this would shift around a little too much and I wouldn't always get a perfect seat with how um, inconsistent the back surface of a 3D print is. So I quickly realized this just wasn't the route to go. Um, I know a lot of people sense uh, my initial videos and posts on this back in 2014, went the 3D printed route and figured it out how to do it. But even when I took the time to 3D print off theirs on my Perusa, I still saw the same issues I had back in 2014 and I printed this off in 2019 to test it when I decided to pick back up the project after uh, many years off with school taking priority. And it's, it's a pretty nifty little idea, they've got the star pattern on the back here. It actually printed really well. My 3D printer didn't have almost any issue with it. It all slots together really nicely. I was impressed at how little issue there was printing it. but. It still had the seating issue, there was some air leakage, occasionally it just wouldn't fire. And so I went back to the idea that I was originally thinking in 2019, or 2014, not 2019, um, to pursue a different route than 3D printed barrels. But I had to be sure to test this to verify that the problem hadn't been solved in the time I'd taken off, um, which thankfully it hadn't for me. So with that, I moved into a different variant where I started printing um, these hex shafts and seven shot things and some of them just turned out terribly and some turned out really nicely. But with this, I made it a holder for the barrels and pursued the brass barrel option. So I was going to make brass breeches um, basically that perfectly held uh, the nerf darts and then would shoot them out when the air was applied. Initially I had similar issues where the back surface wasn't consistent enough. I couldn't get it to seal around the 3D print and the brass coming together. There was too much of an air gap. Uh, the brass would be cut inconsistently so there might be a little bit of a lip grabbing on the dart. So it took me quite a while to figure out how to get that issue under control. 
but I quickly started running down different ideas where I took, I started restricting the amount of air through so that I could get it to seal against the air chamber. And the barrels started to fit very consistently inside the 3D prints. My final variant on this back piece, which is what I ended up iterating the most, had these little, basically almost archways in them that I used. And you can see the print quality on the back here is almost glass. It was just incredible. This was when I jumped um, to different print settings on my Perusa and found different ways to just get it to seat perfectly on the base of the print, or on the base of the printer. So once I went here, suddenly it worked. The entire thing just works. So I can cycle through and it's got such a good seal that it will just want to push the dart out. Occasionally I don't get it to move properly and it won't cycle through, but that's mostly when I'm doing this, um, yeah, when I'm doing this not actually firing it, it doesn't want to go. But if I actually um, shoot the blaster, I get perfect transition through all seven shots. And you can see that it seats in there beautifully. It actually utilizes the original hardware out of the blaster to seat against. That was another thing I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to take this orange piece that I actually got this one stuck on here and I can't get it back off. But I wanted to be able to take this orange piece that's in the blaster itself, take it off and utilize it in there as well as utilize the part that seats in the back end of the cam mechanism uh, inside the blaster itself. So we're going to go ahead and jump real quick to an open uh, blaster, a different one. This is my finalized version with a whole uh, ModWorks trigger and hammer, but we'll jump to one, uh, second one I made and view the internals of that. All right, so as we jump into this blaster, which is my second one, obvious by the fact that it doesn't have uh, the same trigger, and to just prove that it does work, I'll go ahead and cycle through the chambers for those that will think that this is somehow a non-functioning model. I can sit here and do this all day with a blaster. Yeah, it's terrible on the chamber to dry fire without an air suppressor or air restriction of any sorts, but I can do this all day long. I've tested these things for hours on end trying to break them so I could make them better. I never succeeded at breaking them. All right, but now that we've done that and sent a ton of screws all over the place, let's go ahead and open this thing up and take a look at what's on the inside. And yeah, there's some screws and parts on the floor. So as you can see on the inside, there's the standard hammer shot internals, your spring, your hammer, trigger, plunger, and then there is my updated blaster section, or updated chamber section that houses the seven individual shots. So if we remove this section, you can see that it utilizes the orange front piece that comes out of the hammer shot. And on the back end, it utilizes the back holder that was originally a part of the hammer shot. I can verify that by taking the original hammer shot piece and sliding it on there and showing that that's what it was originally meant to hold. So, And then if we take a look at this, you can see that I had to do a little bit of taping back here on this one because it's a little loose, but it was close enough to meet all the needs and a little bit of slack in the tolerance helped me to get the cam to slide every time and chamber through. Um, the air restrictor that's actually built into the chamber itself is always depressed by this top edge here. So it is always uh, full power all the time. There is never a point when the chamber is actually closed by this little plunger addition here. Um, so all seven shots sit in there. I did, all right, I do hot glue um, slash use a little bit of super glue on the base here 
to help verify the seal around the bottom edge of the 3D print to the brass barrels just to guarantee that I don't have any leaks. Um, if one of these were to break in use, it is out of commission until you flay the blaster back open and fix it. So, with that, that is the Nerf hammer shot, seven shot blaster modification. Well, I should rephrase, it's not even that. This is the Nerf hammer shot, seven shot brass barrel modification. So, with that, I give you a functional blaster, and not just one, but I've got two of them. So I can dual wield. Thank you for watching my Nerf Hammershot 7-Shot Brass Barrel Modification. Um, please consider subscribing, come back and look for more content as I post it. Uh, there are always going to be more projects. I'll be posting videos on some old projects that I've had, some ideas I've had over the years, things that have come to fruition, things that have not.